and welcome to the kingdom of Splatterlot. Here are today's 12 steely-eyed attackers who will be going up against the defiant defenders as they strive to deprive the castle of its highly coveted crown. Follow the enemy to the top of the tower! <laughs> will these dreaded defenders be able to fight off the invading horde and keep the crown for themselves? Selfish! Or will the attackers reign supreme? Either way, they'll be tumbling, tilting, teetering, and above all, splatting! <laughs> And we're here at Castle Splat for the mother of all Splatfests. Well, that's the grandmother of all Splat. That I wouldn't go that far. What? I mean, why not? I mean, we've got foam splats, water splats, mud splats, and good old-fashioned paintball splats. You're right. We've got a granny splat on our hands. Mm. And this is how it works. All 12 attackers try to cross the moat. The fastest six go through to the stockade. And the first four to escape go through to the final, where there's just one chance to place a paw on the splat lot crown. Let's take a closer look at the first round, snappily titled The Merciless Moat. It all starts with a trip across the bamboozling battle balls. They'll boozle your bams onto the slippery slope and across the rolling race. Slip up and you'll get slammed. Then it's down the impossible incline and up onto the beastly battle axes. Uh, they'll slice you thinner than Palmer ham. Then it's time to risk the rope bridge of disaster. It would be quicker if you swam. Finally, a bounce on the heinous helper will take the attackers over to the finished platform. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, for the splat. So that's the first round. Twelve enter. None survive. <laughs> Wait. All right, I mean, the six fastest go through to the next round. But it's not just the obstacles they'll have to defeat. No, no, they'll also face... The Defenders, whose job it is to slow those attackers down. <laughs> Defending the moat today, the Simply Sneaky Ballista. Hello, attacker! The Simply Horribly Vicious Nitrous. And the Simply... Just say Thorn. It's Thorn. Are you ready for us? Because we're ready for you. Got it. I've understood. We'll be talking you through the action from our commentator's flat-proof shack. Yes, it's just like Wimbledon, really, except the balls are filled with paint, covered in goo, and fired from splatzookers. Over to the course. The king has arrived. Hang on, is he the king? Nitrous doesn't seem to think so. Mm, it's a good question, though. Who is the king right now? Have we got a supply king in? Well, here's the first candidate, Taylor. <laughs> Go on, Taylor. Hey, she's off. She's right off. Let's hope that isn't a sign of splats to come. I wouldn't hold your breath, darling. Especially as Belista's lining up a shot. How are you, Belista? I'm fine. She's fine. She fires and she splats. Told you not to hold your breath. What a splat. Lovely shot. Taylor shakes off the face splat and makes a run for it. Oh, who's Jammy? A whole body mode splat with an unusual sideways twist. Is that splat of the day? What? So soon? Taylor's onto the impossible incline, takes that fast and welly chin. A head first rolling splat. She's splatting majestically. It's like she's the queen of splats. Just calm down. She's only the first attacker. This looks better. Taylor makes the battle axes look like a walk in the park. And she's onto the rope bridge of disaster. Maybe her look is about to change. Crusty oh, belly juice. Didn't she notice that big orange thing at the end? Actually, should we have a scarier name for it than the big orange thing? Uh, the outrageous obstacle. That'll do. I'm not going to get the crown like that. You ain't getting a tiara. Taylor John for the platform. Oh, dingle. I think Taylor deserves a tiara for that splat extravaganza. What you will get is a face of that. <laughs> Evil for last, but Taylor still posts an impressive time of 5.04. No other attacks! Yeah! Attacker number two, Devin, sped over the battle balls and now faces Belista. What are you thinking about now? Probably something like, shut up and don't splat me. Devin! She's very pretty, isn't she? Yeah, she is pretty. Pretty scary when she's got a splat zooker in front of her. Can we concentrate on the game, please? Come on, Devin, get on with it. What are you waiting for? Very fast run from Devin, straight down the... Oh, and straight off the end of the maze. And the replay reveals what an incredible leap that was. Hey, hang on. That's a bit too incredible. Dick, are you messing about with the pictures again? Oh, oh yes, sorry. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Look, I told you time and time again not to press any of the shiny buttons. Sorry, but it's got to stop. Hide yourself in the face. What? You heard me. Mm. Thank you. Right, can we continue? Good. Now, while Dick was being naughty, Devin made it over the battle axes and the rope bridge and has landed himself a great time of 4.29. Here's Dana. Purple Dana, when he's on top of the tower! <laughs> if you say so, Dana, bang! Direct hit break! Melissa calls the shots and she's bang on her money. Dana's now banging the moti. She 
she's back up on the axis. Oh, oh and back off them. Now, Dana apparently prides herself on her swimming. Well, her diving seems to be coming along too. Oops. Dana makes it to the bridge. She's taking heavy fire from Vaughan. Fungal flop. Heavy fire often leads to a heavy fungal flop. And Dana finishes with 723. She's happy, but that time could put her in the danger zone. Let's meet our next attacker, Austin. The only man you need to know is Thor. Well, at least Thor seems to have dropped his claim to the crown. Austin going well on the balls, but not impressing Nitrous. He's doing a great job. But the Blue Knight looks bored. Ignore her, Austin. We're impressed. Let's have some fun, Austin. Careful, she almost definitely means evil fun. Yeah, there won't be balloons or anything, just splats. As Austin's just found out. Well, Austin, don't say we didn't warn you. Austin heading for another spot on the incline. Oh, truly is the impossible incline accurately named. Oh, you sound like Yoda. Disrespect me, you shouldn't. Mm. And disrespect the water cannon, Austin shouldn't. Yeah. Babalash. And the poor young attacker is back in the moat. Nonetheless, he picks up a useful time of 5.19. So here's attacker number five, Madison. Bazinga! Madison loves golf and says she would love to have the power of invisibility. Well, that's one way of doing it. Disappearing into the moat. I'm not sure it's practical for every day. Hmm, yes. She is on the axis. Oh! That was a spinning, splashing splatdown. I think we've got another contender for splat of the day. Madison slips, trips, and then tips into the moat for a dip. Everyone's had trouble with the bridge today, and Madison's no exception. But she crosses the finish line with a pretty good time of 5.11. Now let's see what attacker number six Michael has to say for himself. Stop! It'd be a trap! If you knew it was a trap, why'd you just stand there? He's not standing there now. Whoa. Mike makes a great start on the battle balls. Steady. Oh, Swinker! Do you think that was the trap he was talking about? Stop! It'd be a spike. Mike sets off on the mace and takes a direct hit from Ballista. It throws him off course, throwing him off the mace and into the Uji Machisi whatnot. Can he make a better job of the beastly battle axes? Blob Goblin! Look at all that fog! What? Oh yes, OK, leave it to me. There you go. Hey, frog. What? Not frog! Fog! I told you to leave the shiny buttons alone! Sorry. Anyway, Michael crosses the bridge and finishes! This chair has been won! He sounds exhausted, but he set the top time so far with 4.02, and the time to beat for the next six attackers is Dana's 7.23. If they're going to do that, they'll have to take the splats, the taunts, the falls, and the spikes as fast as they splatively can. What a first half! Oh, yes, we definitely got our splats worth there. Even two early contenders for splat of the day, I think. Listen, love, how do we actually work out splat of the day? No, it's very complicated, darling. Oh, I imagine there's a detailed comparison of things like difficulty and duration. Hmm. Probably some tricky maths. Maybe an independent observer to make sure it's all fair. Sort of. <laughs> so, how exactly do we do this? Well, I asked my hamster. What? Yes, his name is Steve. Now, here comes the science bit. I put all the attackers' names on bits of food, and whichever name Steve eats, Get splat of the day. That's that's genius. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> oh, and now let's remind ourselves what the fluffing hamsters is going on. Taking a look back at our first six attackers, we had a flying frog, a tingling tiara, a pretty tricky ballista, and a super collection of splats. Michael's sitting pretty with four minutes two, but Dana's getting twitchy with seven twenty-three. Now on to the second half. The important thing to remember is to change your pants at least once a week. But only the six fastest attackers go through. Yes, that too. Now, so, here's attacker number seven, Carly Marie. Babowski! Bless you. Carly Marie loves baking and hates spiders. Blood walrus, how does she feel about battle balls to the bots? Mm, doesn't say. So she likes baking and spiders. What about baking spiders? That's not important right now. Carly's made it to the rolling mace. <laughs> Pardon? Oh, snizzle wipe! And Carly's off pretty much straight away! Did Ballista just growl her into the moat? You call that a scream? Master Thorn! Watch this! Bump the bump, Shire! And Carly takes a splat for her troubles! Ballista once again showing off her precision splat zookering skills. Yes, pretty Ballista is now being pretty cheeky! Carly now at the rope bridge of Tankstrap! Will she do any better on the heinous helper? She leaps Oh, Bimble! Bimble indeed. She fell, but she bounced back and finishes with a time of 5.19, knocking Dana out of the tournament. Here's the next attacker, Chris. 
I'm on a castle. Strictly speaking, you're in a castle. We do like to be geographically accurate. You forgot the most important thing. This is my castle. Oh, no, not well, this again. Yeah, Chris, you're not just on any castle. He's not on any castle at all. In fact, he's in the moat outside the castle. We can all agree he's now on the base, except for the fact he's not now. Okay, okay. Can we all agree that Chris is now in the moat? Yes. On to the axes. Ha! Yes! Even with just one weapon. We'll still get you, my dear. Go, Chris! And he does. Chris gets the wet end of the water cannon, but it's not quite the full splat. And Chris finishes in an amazing 2.37, the fastest time so far by a mile. Here's attacker number nine, Jesse. I can't swim. Oh, uh, so the moat challenge might not be right for you then, Jesse. Skip to attacker 10? Yes. I'm a double! Welcome to the world of Thor. Boo hockey! Karina's scared of ghosts and wants to be a lifeguard. A lifeguard? That's just what Jesse needed. Bridport! Oh, yes, what a Bridport that was. Karina takes a splat on the noggin and into the egg dog. Douchemonger. She's bravely carrying on, though. Around the incline, past the ghost. Where? There. Look, will you stop it? Karina doesn't need distracting. She needs to hurry up. Can't see now! And Chris takes another victim with her vicious vapors. And Thorne piles under pressure with the water cannon. Nasty Thorne! But she's over with a time of 7.30. Not fast enough to get through, but hey, just finishing the course is enough to throw your arms about. Here's Tori. Tori! No idea what Tori just said, but she made quick work of the battle balls and the slippery slope. Oh, nose jelly, but the mace just made quick work of her. Say hello, Tori. Hi! Tori showing everyone how it's done on the incline. Slow and steady. And then a belly flop. Yes, a skillful technique that helps her onto the battle axes. It's end of story for you, Tori. I think Thorn just made a joke. Bumble waste! That's plus no joke for Tori, but she's finished and she has made it through to the second round. The final attacker is Mona. Got it! She knows she's against the clock, so will want to get off to a fast start. So a slow struggle on the battle balls is not what she needs right now, but it's what she's getting. Oh, she's also getting it in the neck from Ballista. You can turn back now. Or you could run over the terrifying rolling mace. Watch banger! These attackers need to be flattened. Talk sense, Ballista. If they were flat, you wouldn't be able to see them when they turn sideways. And then what would you fire your dirty paintballs at? Oh, I want plenty more where that came from. But Thorn's bag of spare splats are not required. Mona splats herself big time in the men's book. Despite the self-splatting, Mona makes it over the drawbridge in a time of 4.56, which is good enough to put her through. So, heading for the stockade are Chris, Michael, Devin, Mona, Taylor and Tori. Oh! Paul Madison was eliminated by just one second! I know, I almost feel sorry for him. What is wrong with you? Why don't you feel sorry for narrowly defeated attacker Madison? Ooh, bad dick, naughty dick! Mm, uh, because now she gets to go home and be all warm and dry. Okay, she might not get to be queen, but she doesn't have to face the foamy stockade. I haven't thought of it like that. You're right. She's well off out of it. Look what she's avoided. Gildar and his buckets of slime. Ugh, a foam fest, courtesy of scab, and attackers desperately try to escape whilst Coop splats them down. It's a splatsident waiting to happen. The moat challenge has left us with our fastest six attackers. But how will they get on in the slippery second round? They might be speedy, but pace is no guarantee of success in the stockade. Yes, because this isn't against the clock, it's against each other, which makes this challenge rather spicy. Our attackers are... Chris, Michael, Devin, Mona, Taylor and Tori. And now let's remind ourselves exactly what the attackers will be facing in the stockade. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Hey. So I'm just trying to build the... Well, you don't need to, because the stockade is tense enough as it is. Mm, mm, mm. The attackers start by racing across the gigantic hexagon to get across to the smaller hexapods. They'll have to balance on the slippery pods long enough to grab rungs. Then race back over the hexagon to build their ladders. Once built, they have to grab a flag and get to the top of the battlements. The whole time being splatted by defenders, including the mucky scab, the flappy eccentric kookaburra, and the raging poser, Gildar. Don't be nasty. Welcome to Splatterlot. To Splatterlot? Hmm? Splatterlot. Single word? Splat? Splatterlot! Oh, what are they like? They defy description. Time for a helmet check. That's Devin in the mint helmet. Mona in the violet. Tori with the lemon stripe. Michael with a full lemon. Taylor with a coral helmet. And Chris with the sludge. With Scab on the phone, Kook on the goo, and Gildar on the slime. Hey, and they're off. The attackers make a run for the hexagon. I love my job, ladies and gentlemen. 
Right, yeah, because there's so many other jobs you can do. To be fair, he is good at it. Check out that hit on Mona. She goes for the pod, and Coop goes for the splat. Gildar doing Tori off a hexapod there, whilst Coop goes crazy with the goo grenades. The defenders are showing no mercy. They're really not messing about at spreading the mess about. This is weird. Where are the bad jokes and the infighting? Gildar, is it just me or does that laugh get annoying every single day? Very annoying. Ah, oh, that's more like it. The baddies are bickering. I suspect we haven't heard the last of this. I bet you, you can't go this whole round without doing that annoying laugh. I bet you, my friend, that you cannot yell or say stab rules once during this round. Fine. It's on. You're on. Well, who will crack first, scab or cook? <laughs> oh, yes, that's uh, much less annoying, Coop. Hey, scab, what's that funny, funny slogan you always say? Quick update on the reason why we're actually here. Chris and Michael are on their last runs. Wait, I'll get it. Scab is great. Chris grabs the first flag, and he's heading back to his ladder. These attackers are literally walking around what's meant to be the messiest round. Scab dominates. Yeah, huh? really catchy, that one, Scab. The old dog gets his head back in the game with the slime drop on Mona. Check it out! It's not just Chris with the flag. Michael's right behind him. Both of them are through to the final. Ooh, cleans in for a slime test on Tori. Ooh, slap bang in the goggles. Did you know that Crocodess and Gildar were once married? No. What? Yes. No. Scab's yeah. just making things up, surely. Actually, I think that might well be true. I remember reading it in Gossip International. Yeah, but you can't believe everything you read in the press. I don't believe that. You guys are so handsome. I am very handsome. Yes, yes, but were you married to Cockness? I told you that in confidence. Thank goodness we've cleared that up. Frankly, I'm surprised at Crockness. I thought she had better taste. Taste? The woman has an alligator head for a scarf. Good point. Back to the tournament. Mona has the third flag and she's going for a ladder. And there's Devin grabbing a flag of his own. That's all four flags. And with four attackers making it to the top, that leaves Taylor and Tori all alone in the foam going home. Well put. Thank you. So the stockade has done its job. Four attackers remain, and they will soon be attempting to capture the crown of Splatterlot. Yep, Chris, Michael, Mona and Devin are all heading for the grand final. Which, let me tell you, is no picnic. Unless that picnic involves some of the following. Sploshes, splats, evil defenders armed to the teeth, more splats and being caked in foam. But at least no wasps. What? For the picnic. Oh. You know, Dom, I've been thinking. You've been a really good mate to me. I mean, like when I was messing about in the first round and you made me pie myself. What I'm trying to say is, you've always been there for me. Yeah, well, uh, no worries, eh? I just want you to know I appreciate it and that I'd happily do the same for you. Yeah, well, thanks. In fact, I'll do it right now. Here's a quick reminder of our four possible rulers. The crown could go to Chris, Michael, Mona, or Devin. But standing in their way and slowing them down will be Thorn, Gilda, Kukubara, Nitrous, Scab, and Berlista. Quick splat stat. Chris has been the fastest in both rounds so far and has to be the favourite. But Michael's been right behind him all the way. One slip and Chris could be attending King Mike's coronation. Let's see what they're up against. The course starts with a pole drop into the mucky mud bars. Then it's over the slides and onto the titanic teeter totters. Followed by the barrier of all barriers and the lily pads. Then all that's left is a climb off the water wall where the majestic splatterlock crown awaits. There it is. Lovely. Let's get going. Now traditionally we start with some funky singing. Battlelot, battlelot. Ah, there we go. Well, if you can't beat them, join in. Is this the worst one yet? I've almost forgotten the words. So that's Chris in the dark green, Michael in the vanilla, Mona in the mauve, and Devin in the teal. Hey, they're off straight down into the mud bath. Followed by a face fall from the froth brother. Vaughn and Gildar manning those foam pipes like the kingdom depends on it. That's because it does. Ah, moving on. Well, Mona certainly is. Gildar still foaming away, but oh! Ah, oh, my neck! My neck! Someone give me a medic! Oh, dear. But I'm sure he's fine. They concentrate on the attackers. Luke, splatting Chris left, right and centre. Let's see that again. Stinch hammer. He's off, but still in the lead. Here's a Gildar update. Bad news, everyone. 
I've hurt my neck while flipping my hair. I'm going to be unable to compete today, but I've decided to coach you from the sideline. No, we're good, thank you. Anyway. Are you okay? I hurt myself very bad. You said it'd be fine, mate. Concentrate, Nick. There's Mona, teetering off the totter. And Coop just good Chris again, although he's still in the lead. Yes, 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 but I want to know how Gildar is. As a Viking who is injured, I am very proud of you all. Very proud and handsome. See, look, he's fine. Now commentate. All right, <clears throat> where were we? Ah, yes, there's Devin pulling himself out of the water, but Michael in yellow is making a play for the barriers. Yes, he's up, he's got his footing, steadies himself, and he leaps. Chris trying to join him. Oh, scab splats him. No Viking coach required there. Devin and Mona on the tosses. You know, scab is like a crazy psycho barbarian. But in a good way. Ah! Michael is taking quite a splatting out in front. Favourite Chris still back in second place. Nitrous lines one up. Michael leaps and falls short of the water wall. Could this be a chance for Chris? Well, thanks to Thorne, we've got absolutely no way of telling. Way to go, smoke boy. Here's Chris. Trying to steady himself on his lily pad. And he jumps and he makes it. He's closing in on Michael, who's trying again to reach the water wall. This is getting very close indeed. Nitrous is looking determined. You can't stand the suspense, and neither can I. Would you prefer a reminder of the slow ones at the back? No, I want to see the tense battle to the finish. How about Michael doing a silly dance? No, stop it. Stop pressing the shiny buttons. This is the final. Well, that was embarrassing. Please. Mona's nearly at the barrier, but I don't think she can catch the leaders. No, nope. looks like this is a two-horse race, and those two horses are Michael and Chris, who aren't actually ponies, but two young chaps. I think I preferred it when you were pushing the buttons. Chris struggling to get started at the base of the water wall, whilst Mona tries to make herself the third non-pony in this two-horse race. Michael is totally failing to get a grip, but Chris has finally figured it out. He's on his way up. He's getting away! I can't see anyone catching Chris now. No, Michael's still in the water. Look at him the crown! Too late, he's got the crown. All hail King Chris, new king of Splatterlot. Sorry, Michael. That's really embarrassing, everyone. Says the Viking with a bob and gold shoulder pads. Yeah, don't kick a man when he's down. Or in this case, when he's accidentally really hurt himself, flicking his lovely shiny hair. Sorry, Gildar. Well, wasn't King Chris impressive? He was the favourite, but as predicted, Michael pushed him all the way. In fact, for most of that round, he was in the lead, making it a very exciting final indeed. And the excitement just keeps coming. Yes, strike up the band and get out the hamster, because it's time for... What are they? And I can now reveal that the first name Hamster Steve munched through was... Madison! Let's see her splat! Madison made the first step onto the battle axes look easy. But when she went for the second step, she went down in a spectacular fashion. Respect! And here's something even more spectacular. No way! That's just not possible. Oh, yes, it is. I give you the story of King Chris and his quest for the fabled crown of Splatterlot. Chris showed amazing speed on the bamboozling battle balls. He followed that with amazing skill in the stockade. And then finished with amazing determination in the final round, eventually finding his way up the water wall to that amazing crown. Amazing? So that's the end of this amazing episode of Splatterlot. All that remains to say is he's Dom. He's Big Nose. And this is King Chris getting crap. King of the castle. We'll see you soon. But in the meantime, keep splatting. on his lily pad and he jumps and he makes it he's closing in on michael who's trying again to reach the water wall this is getting very close indeed nitrous is looking determined you can't stand the suspense and neither can i would you prefer a reminder of the slow ones at the back no i want to see the tense battle to the finish how about michael doing a silly dance no stop it stop pressing the shiny buttons this is the final well, that was embarrassing please Mona's nearly at the barrier, but I don't think she can catch the leaders. No, nope. looks like this is a two-horse race, and those two horses are Michael and Chris, who aren't actually ponies, but two young chaps. I think I preferred it when you were pushing the buttons. 
Chris struggling to get started at the base of the water wall, whilst Mona tries to make herself the third non-pony in this two-horse race. Michael is totally failing to get a grip, but Chris has finally figured it out. He's on his way up. He's getting away! Everybody, this one! I can't see anyone catching Chris now. No, Michael's still in the water. Michael is getting the crown! Too late, he's got the crown. All hail King Chris, new king of Spatalot! Sorry, Michael. That's really embarrassing, everyone. Says the Viking with a bob and gold shoulder pads. Yeah, don't kick a man when he's down. Or in this case, when he's accidentally really hurt himself, flicking his lovely shiny hair. Sorry, Gildar. Well, wasn't King Chris impressive? He was the favourite, but as predicted, Michael pushed him all the way. In fact, for most of that round, he was in the lead, making it a very exciting final indeed. And the excitement just keeps coming. Yes, strike up the band and get out the hamster, because it's time for Swat of the Day. And I can now reveal that the first name Hamster Steve munched through was... Madison! Let's see her splat! Madison made the first step onto the battle axes look easy. But when she went for the second step, she went down in a spectacular fashion. Respect! And here's something even more spectacular. No way! That's just not possible. Oh, yes, it is. I give you the story of King Chris and his quest for the fabled crown of Splatterlot. Chris showed amazing speed on the bamboozling battle balls. He followed that with amazing skill in the stockade. And then finished with amazing determination in the final round, eventually finding his way up the water wall to that amazing crown. Amazing? So that's the end of this amazing episode of Splatterlot. All that remains to say is he's Dom, he's Big Nose, and this is King Chris getting crap. King of the castle. We'll see you soon. But in the meantime, keep splatting. And the poor young attacker is back in the moat. Nonetheless, he picks up a useful time of 5.19. So here's attacker number five, Madison. Madison! Madison loves golf and says she would love to have the power of invisibility. Well, that's one way of doing it, disappearing into the moat. I'm not sure it's practical for every day. Hmm, yes. She is on the axis. Oh! That was a spinning, splashing splatdown. I think we've got another contender for splat of the day. Madison slips, trips, and then tips into the moat for a dip. Everyone's had trouble with the bridge today, and Madison's no exception. But she crosses the finish line with a pretty good time of 5.11. Now let's see what attacker number six Michael has to say for himself. Stop! It'd be a trap! If you knew it was a trap, why'd you just stand there? He's not standing there now. Whoa. Mike makes a great start on the battle balls. Steady. Oh, Swinker. Do you think that was the trap he was talking about? Stop. It'd be a spike. Mike sets off on the mace and takes a direct hit from Ballista. It throws him off course, throwing him off the mace and into the Uji Machisi whatnot. Can he make a better job of the beastly battle axes? Blob Goblin. Look at all that fog. What? Oh, yes. OK, leave it to me. There you go. Hey, frog. What? Not frog! Fog! I told you to leave the shiny buttons alone! Sorry. Anyway, Michael crosses the bridge and finishes! This chair has been won! He sounds exhausted, but he set the top time so far with 4.02, and the time to beat for the next six attackers is Dana's 7.23. If they're going to do that, they'll have to take the splats, the taunts, the falls, and the spikes as fast as they splatively can. What a first half! Oh, yes, we definitely got our splats worth there. Even two early contenders for splat of the day, I think. Listen, love, how do we actually work out splat of the day? No, it's very complicated, darling. Oh, I imagine there's a detailed comparison of things like difficulty and duration. Hmm. 
Probably some tricky maths. Maybe an independent observer to make sure it's all fair. Sort of. <laughs> so, how exactly do we do this? Well, I asked my hamster. What? Yes, his name is Steve. Now, here comes the science bit. I put all the attackers' names on bits of food, and whichever name Steve eats gets splat of the day. That's... that's... Genius! Yes! Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, and now let's remind ourselves what the fluffing hamsters is going on. Taking a look back at our first six attackers, we had a flight all alone in the foam going home. Well put. Thank you. So the stockade has done its job. Four attackers remain and they will soon be attempting to capture the crown of Splatterlot. Yep, Chris, Michael, Mona and Devin are all heading for the grand final. Which, let me tell you, is no picnic. Unless that picnic involves some of the following. Sploshes! Splats! Evil defenders armed to the teeth! More splats! And being caked in foam! But at least no wasps. What? For the picnic, oh. You know, Dom, I've been thinking. Oh, no. You've been a really good mate to me. I mean, like when I was messing about in the first round and you made me pie myself. What I'm trying to say is, you've always been there for me. Yeah, well, uh, no worries, eh? I just want you to know I appreciate it and that I'd happily do the same for you. Yeah, well, thanks. In fact, I'll do it right now. Here's a quick reminder of our four possible rulers. The crown could go to Chris, Michael, Mona, or Devin. But standing in their way and slowing them down will be Thorn, Gilda, Kukubara, Nitrous, Scab, and Berlista. Quick splat stat. Chris has been the fastest in both rounds so far and has to be the favourite. But Michael's been right behind him all the way. One slip and Chris could be attending King Mike's coronation. Let's see what they're up against. The course starts with a pole drop into the mucky mud bars. Then it's over the slides and onto the titanic teeter totters. Followed by the barrier of all barriers and the lily pads. Then all that's left is a climb off the water wall where the majestic splatterlock crown awaits. There it is. Lovely. Let's get going. Now, traditionally, we start with some funky singing. Battlelock, battlelock. Ah, there we go. Well, if you can't beat them, join in. Is this the worst one yet? I've almost forgotten the words. So that's Chris in the dark green, Michael in the vanilla, Mona in the mauve, and Devin in the teal. Hey, they're off straight down into the mud bath. Followed by a face fall from the froth brother. Lord and Gildar manning those foam pipes like the kingdom depends on it. That's because it does. Ah, moving on. Well, Mona certainly is. Gildar still foaming away, but oh! Ah, oh, my neck! My neck! Someone give me a medic! Oh, dear. But I'm sure he's fine. They concentrate on the attackers. Luke, splatting Chris left, right and centre. Let's see that again. Stinch hammer. He's off, but still in the lead. Here's a Gildar update. Bad news, everyone. I've hurt my neck while flipping my hair. I'm going to be unable to compete today. But I decided to coach you from the sideline. No, we're good, thank you. Anyway. Are you okay? I hurt myself very badly. You said it'd be fine, mate. Concentrate, Dick. You've been a really good mate to me. I mean, like when I was messing about in the first round and you made me pie myself. What I'm trying to say is, you've always been there for me. Yeah, well, uh, no worries, eh? I just want you to know I appreciate it and that I'd happily do the same for you. Yeah, well, thanks. In fact... I'll do it right now. Thank you. Right, here's a quick reminder of our four possible rulers. The crown could go to Chris, Michael, Mona, or Devin. But standing in their way and slowing them down will be Thorn, Gilda, Kukubara, Nitrous, Scab, and Berlista. Quick splat stat. Chris has been the fastest in both rounds so far and has to be the favourite. But Michael's been right behind him all the way. One slip and Chris could be attending King Mike's coronation. Let's see what they're up against. The course starts with a pole drop into the mucky mud bars. Then it's over the slides and onto the titanic teeter totters. Followed by the barrier of all barriers and the lily pads. Then all that's left is a climb off the water wall where the majestic splatterlock crown awaits. There it is. Lovely. Let's get going. Now, traditionally, we start with some funky singing. Battlelock, battlelock. Ah, there we go. Well, if you can't beat them, join in. Is this the worst one yet? Someone's forgotten the words. 
So that's Chris in the dark green, Michael in the vanilla, Mona in the mauve, and Devin in the teal. And a lot straight down into the mud bath. Followed by a face fall from the froth brother. Vaughn and Gildar manning those foam pipes like the kingdom depends on it. That's because it does. Ah, moving on. Well, Mona certainly is. Gildar still foaming away. But oh! Ah, oh, my neck! My neck! Someone give me a medic! Oh, dear. But I'm sure he's fine. They concentrate on the attackers. Luke, splatting Chris left, right and centre. Let's see that again. Stinch hammer. He's off, but still in the lead. Here's a Gildar update. Bad news, everyone. I've hurt my neck while flipping my hair. I'm going to be unable to compete today, but I've decided to coach you from the sideline. No, we're good. Thank you. Anyway. Are you okay? I hurt myself very badly. You said it'd be fine, mate. Concentrate, Dick. There's Mona, teetering off the totter. And Coop just good Chris again, although he's still in the lead. Yes, 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 but I want to know how Gildar is. As a Viking who is injured, I am very proud of you all. Very proud and handsome. See, look, he's fine. Now commentate. All right, <clears throat> where were we? Ah, yes, there's Devin pulling himself out of the water, but Michael in yellow is making a play for the barriers. Yes, he's up, he's got his footing, steadies himself, and he leaps. Chris trying to join him. Goes! Bad a lot, bad a lot, bad a lot, bad a lot. Who's doing Ah, there we go. Well, if you can't beat them, join in. Is this the worst one yet? I've almost forgotten the words. So that's Chris in the dark green, Michael in the vanilla, Mona in the mauve, and Devin in the teal. And a lot straight down into the mud bath. Followed by a face fall from the froth brother. Lord and Gildar manning those foam pipes like the kingdom depends on it. That's because it does. Ah, moving on. Well, Mona certainly is. Gildar still foaming away, but oh! Ah, oh, my neck! My neck! Someone give me a medic! Oh, dear. But I'm sure he's fine. They concentrate on the attackers. Luke, splatting Chris left, right and centre. Let's see that again. Stinch hammer. He's off, but still in the lead. Here's a Gildar update. Bad news, everyone. I've hurt my neck while flipping my hair. I'm going to be unable to compete today, but I've decided to coach you from the sideline. No, oh, we're good, thank you. Anyway. Are you okay? I hurt myself very badly. You said it'd be fine, mate. Concentrate, Dick. There's Mona, teetering off the totter. And Coop just good Chris again, although he's still in the lead. Yes, 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 but I want to know how Gildar is. As a Viking who is injured, I am very proud of you all. Very proud and handsome. See, look, he's fine. Now commentate. All right, <clears throat> where were we? Ah, yes, there's Devin pulling himself out of the water, but Michael in yellow is making a play for the barriers. Yes, he's up, he's got his footing, steadies himself, and he leaps. Chris trying to join him. Oh, scab splats him. No Viking coach required there. Devin and Mona on the tosses. You know, scab is like a crazy psycho barbarian. But in a good way. Ah! Michael is taking quite a splatting out in front. Favourite Chris still back in second place. Nitrous lines one up. Michael leaps and falls short of the water wall. Could this be a chance for Chris? Well, thanks to Thorne, we've got absolutely no way of telling. Way to go, smoke boy. Here's Chris. Trying to steady himself on his lily pad. And he jumps and he makes it. He's closing in on Michael, who's trying again to reach the water wall. This is getting very close indeed. Nitrous is looking determined. She can't stand the suspense, and neither can I. Would you prefer a reminder of the slow ones at the back? No, I want to see the tense battle to the finish. How about Michael doing a silly dance? No, stop it. Stop pressing the shiny buttons. This is the final. Well, that was embarrassing. Please. Mona's nearly at the barrier, but I don't think she can catch the leaders. No, nope, looks like this is a two-horse race, and those two horses are Michael and Chris, who aren't actually ponies, but two young chaps. I think I preferred it when you were pushing the buttons. Chris, struggling to get started at the base of the water wall, whilst Mona tries to make herself the third non-pony in this two-horse race. Michael is totally failing to get a grip, but Chris has finally figured it out. He's on his way up. He's getting away! Great start on the battle balls. Steady. Oh, Swinker! Do you think that was the trap he was talking about? Stop! It'd be a spike. Mike sets off on the mace and takes a direct hit from Belisa. It throws him off course, throwing him off the mace and into the Uji Machisi whatnot. Can he make a better job of the beastly battle axes? Blob Goblin! Look at all that fog! What? Oh, yes, okay, leave it to me. There you go. Hey, frog. What? Not frog! Fog! 
I told you to leave the shiny buttons alone. Sorry. Anyway, Michael crosses the bridge and finishes. This chair has been won. He sounds exhausted, but he set the top time so far with 4.02, and the time to beat for the next six attackers is Dana's 7.23. If they're going to do that, they'll have to take the splats, the taunts, the falls, and the spikes as fast as they splatively can. What a first half! Oh, yes, we definitely got our splats worth there. Even two early contenders for splat of the day, I think. Listen, love, how do we actually work out the splat of the day? No, it's very complicated, darling. Oh, I imagine there's a detailed comparison of things like difficulty and duration. Hmm. Probably some tricky maths. Maybe an independent observer to make sure it's all fair. Sort of. <laughs> so, how exactly do we do this? Well, I asked my hamster. What? Yes, his name is Steve. Now, here comes the science bit. I put all the attackers' names on bits of food, and whichever name Steve eats, Get splat of the day. That's that's genius. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> oh, and now let's remind ourselves what the fluffing hamsters is going on. Taking a look back at our first six attackers, we had a flying frog, a tingling tiara, a pretty tricky balista, and a super collection of splats. Michael's sitting pretty with four minutes two, but Dana's getting twitchy with seven twenty-three. Now on to the second half. The important thing to remember is to change your pants at least once a week. But only the six fastest attackers go through. Yes, that's it. Now, so, here's attacker number seven, Carly Marie. Babowski! Bless you. Carly Marie loves baking and hates spiders. Blast Walrus, how does she feel about battle balls to the bots? Mm, doesn't say. So she likes baking and spiders. What about baking spiders? That's not important right now. Carly's made it to the rolling mace. <laughs> Pardon? Oh, snizzle white! And Carly's off pretty much straight away! Did Ballista just growl her into the moat? You call that a string? Master Thorn! Watch this! Up the bottom, Shire! And Carly takes a splat for her troubles! Ballista once again showing off her precision splat zookering skills! Yes, pretty Ballista is now being pretty cheeky! Carly now at the rope bridge of Tankstrap! Will she do any better on the Heenus helper? She leaps! Oh, Bimble! Bimble indeed. She fell, but she bounced back and finishes with a time of 519, knocking Dana out of the tournament. Here's the next attacker, Chris. I'm on a castle. Strictly speaking, you're in a castle. We do like to be geographically accurate. You forgot the